morning, all you snow bunnies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Bob Irving, but you knew that. And I welcome you to Solbury United Methodist Church. Are there any announcements this morning? Well, uh, <clears throat> Kathy and I uh, packed some meals earlier this week. And we now, we went from zero on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock to 59 by... Monday at 11 a.m. So uh, we're well on our way to uh, getting to our 100 meals for February. And um, I thought there would be a crush of folks, so I, I ordered some Valentine carnations. So no one leaves the room. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <clears throat> and Jesus said, Take a carnation. <clears throat> I think that's in the book of Bob. Poor Carol. Are there other announcements? Then let us center ourselves for worship. Will you please rise, if you are able, and join me in the call to worship. We are here, Lord. Your people, your church, gather together in your presence. We are open to each other and open to you. This is your day, and we shall praise you. This is your day, and we shall proclaim your name. This is your day, and we shall worship our Lord and Savior. Make yourself known to us through our study of your word, how I found our Holy Spirit. We pray in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please join Connie and Marge in our opening hymn, Make Me a Captive, Lord, found in your hymnal number 421.
join me in the opening prayer. O Lord, our God, you are worthy of all our praise. You are the God who never fails to keep his promises. We thank you that in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we see your love, justice, mercy, provision, and victory. You are the God who lifts up those who are weighed down. You are the God who provides for your children. Our desire is to praise you as long as we live. Inhabit our praises as we gather together today through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, the first one, chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. This is the word of God. Thanks. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us now offer one another a sign of peace, bearing in mind that some people do not wish to shake hands. sharing of joys and concerns. Does anyone have any joys that they wish to share? I, I, we have a new little class of um, early three-year-old children that started on Tuesday. They had an open house on Tuesday for them and they started on Thursday. Not one tear from a child. <laughs> a couple of tears from moms, but <laughs> That's not one not from a child. Well, that's good. That's good news. That is good news. Other joys? Well, the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. Yes. <laughs> Let's go, Bengals. <laughs> Other joys? How about concerns? We have our uh, part of our family son and his family, including the two boys, are leaving the country oh. this week oh. to go to a, an island. And uh, my mom is not real thrilled. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which island? Turks and Caicos. Oh, okay. My cousins left from there today. <laughs> yeah. It's 
pretty safe. They, they, they're really strict. They have to get on a plane. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to wear masks. And then they have to get back. It's okay, my mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> but traveling mercies for them, please. Other concerns? Then let us pray. Lord, we're so very grateful for the joys of young children joining the education system. And we're grateful for the people that teach them. And we pray for all those who are traveling at this time in this world as we pray for them to travel safely and to return home safely. And now, as the congregation names the names of the people that are on their heart, we will respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. March. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Joan. Lord, hear our prayer. Harry and Nancy. Lord, hear our prayer. Michael, you were going to say something? Lauren. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these prayers, O Lord. And the prayers for the people that are on our heart that we did not mention. And we praise you and worship you by reciting the words that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please join Connie and Marge in our next hymn, Jesus Calls Us, found in your hymnal, number 398. Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. 
They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have, you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, good morning again. Good morning. As previously stated, my name is Bob Irving. And it is an honor to serve here as the pastor of Solberry United Methodist Church. And I was going to do an explanation as to the sermon title, but something happened to me Friday night that I wanted to share with everyone. I used to work at Acme in Newtown. I worked at the deli. But because of my personality, I had made friends with almost every department. I had friends all over that store, except for the managers, of course, because I would always speak my mind. Well, I ran into one of my friends the other day when I was shopping. His name is Brett, and he works in the meat department. Now, Brett is a believer in God, and he was raised Jewish, but he doesn't attend synagogue, nor does he attend church. And Brett walked up to me and said, hey. Bob, you're a pastor. And I said, yes, I am. I have a friend who's an Israelite. I said, okay. And he just thinks Jesus was another person. So we had a long discussion about Jesus, about the stories of Jesus, and about how Jesus was either the Son of God or he was a madman, using um, uh, C.S. Lewis's famous line, where somebody who goes around and calls himself the Son of God, and isn't the Son of God, is delusional, or psychotic. And I asked him, would a delusional or psychotic person have the capability of healing thousands of people. He said, no. And he said, but I'm still on the fence. And I said, well, look at it this way. We've really got four choices here. There's four boxes. There is a God. There isn't a God. I believe in God. I don't believe in God. If there is a God, and you believe in God, great. If there is not a God, and you believe in God. Does that do any harm to you? No. How about if there is not a God and you don't believe in God? Is there any harm to you? He said, no. He said, what about if you don't believe in God and there is a God? Oh, that's bad, Bob. <laughs> yes, it is. Very good. So he told me he was going to go to a church because he wasn't happy with the Jewish faith. He's going to go to a church today. And of course, when I got home and told the story to Michelle, she said, did you get his number so you can check? <laughs> and I said, no, but I'll st stop by the Acme and see Brett again and say, hey, how was church? He asked me what church to go to. And I said, well, don't start with the Catholics. I think you should start with the Methodists. They're more open. And you'll learn more. 
than if you go to a Catholic service. After the Catholics, you can try anybody you want. I mean, after the, the Methodists, you can try anybody you want. So the title of the sermon today is Jump. And the song Jump was popular in 1984. It was performed by a band named Van Halen. Um, as with a number of songs of that era, it was sometimes hard to understand the lyrics. Initially, I chose the song because it was the only song, TV show, relevant, popular icon thing that related to Jesus telling us to leap for joy. But as is my habit, I bothered to look at the lyrics. I get up and nothing gets me down. You got it tough. I've seen the toughest all around. And I know, baby, just how, just how you feel. You've got to roll with the punches to get to what's real. Interesting. It kind of goes along with the sermon. Now, it has probably been more than 20 years since I left for joy. And uh, that's probably a good thing, because now at 62, leaping for joy could lead to many assorted minor injuries. <laughs> <clears throat> but that is what Jesus tells us to do, especially if we are persecuted for the Son of Man. Please pray with me. Lord, as we study your word in an effort to grow closer to you, we pray for insight and wisdom. Let our ears hear, and let us have the heart to go forth based on your teachings and lead others to you. We pray in your name, Jesus Christ, and all the people said, Amen. Amen. Well, there's a couple things to understand. Translations are difficult. Many of the original manuscripts were written in Aramaic, translated to Greek. And some of them were written in Greek. But sometimes there's not a word to describe what, to, an English word to describe what was meant in the, in the Greek. So we often do something, we often substitute with the best word available. This is a different sermon than the Sermon on the Mount. And it's different because of one, uh, one phrase, a level place. When you think of a level place, you think of a floor, or, or a rock outcropping, or a plain, or a valley, or a field, or this stage. It's a level place. But in Jesus' time, a level place, as described by the prophets, was a place of corpses, disgrace, idolatry, suffering, hunger, misery, annihilation, and mourning. That was a level place. So why did Jesus choose this venue? Well, there's a couple of reasons. God, Jesus, they can make any place a place of healing. And they have dominion over everywhere. And in the prophets, it is said that God will revive the level places will renew them, will restore them. That's why he chose a level place. And that's why what he's doing, and the people around him know this description of a level place. That's why it is so significant. He is showing through action that he is God, and he is renewing the level place. In the Gospel, Jesus performs miracles, and he does his teaching. And the crowds come to him. But I'm always interested in the crowds that come to him. Because, let's look at it this way. Let's suppose you have some dread disease. And there's somebody who can heal you. Would you go and see them on the off chance that they would heal you. Does that mean that you would believe that that person is the Messiah? 
or the Son of God. No, that's the person that's healing you. That's all. Right? And I fail to see how... I mean, you go to a doctor. I had cancer. I went to a doctor, an oncologist, who filled me with chemicals and got rid of the cancer. Right? Do I think that Dr. Thomas Holland, now deceased, is the Messiah? No, I do not. Which is another reason why Jesus is in a level place, in a place of corpses, mourning, annihilation, hunger. Because he is fulfilling what was said by the prophets. And it's interesting because if you count it, he gives out four blessings and four woes. The blessings do not mean an absence of struggle. The blessings are intended to let people know that they are in community moving towards the realm of God. So, what does this mean for us? Well, we have our own level places, don't we? We have our own trials and tribulations. We have our own problems. If you remember last week, we discussed some of the problems that we have. And we are constantly being pulled in different directions. Our attention span is constantly being grabbed at by other things. I met a Russian gentleman. Uh, he came to my mom's house. He was an alarm repair guy. So I asked him, what do you think about Russia and Ukraine? And you know what he said? He said, I don't care. I'm an American. Which I thought was very, rather interesting because I have a Ukrainian gentleman that works for me who earlier in the week was very worried about the Russia-Ukraine thing. But on Friday when I talked to him, he goes, eh, I'm American, Mr. Bob. Interesting. But we have these things that pull at us, right? But we are a community of believers. How do we, as a community of believers, move towards the realm? That's really the big question for us. And what about that part about being wealthy or, or eating well or having a high social standing? How many people in here would consider themselves to be Poor. Raise your hand. Nobody. So, woe unto you, right? That's what he said. No, that's not what he meant. There's greater depth than that, that little surface stuff, just like a level place. How many people in here knew what a level place was in the Old Testament before today? Yeah. Me neither, until I did the research. <laughs> In Matthew, you read, no one can serve two masters. And that's what Jesus is talking about. The people that focus on wealth and not on the betterment of man. People that have lavish parties, but don't bother giving to charity. Or making meals. But we still have not answered the question. How do we move towards the, towards the realm? Well, the clue is in the scripture. You see, Jesus stands in a place that is defiled. And Jesus heals in this place. And Jesus teaches in this place. And Jesus makes this place of defilement a holy place. Jesus redeems the level place. Does that mean that we, as a community of believers, are supposed to go into 
an unseemly area. Camden at mischief night. Is that what it means? Mm, yes and no. In today's world, most of the level places in the world, especially in the United States of America, are found inside of people. We have people that are poor in spirit. We have people that are angry, people that are alone, people that are suffering, people that have difficulties with their lives. We have people that just can't deal with their lives. The people are the level place. And these people are the ones that need healing. Like, for example, the meals that you guys make and put together, right? You are helping to heal a level place. You are healing people who are hungry. You know, it's funny because <clears throat> when I first started my career as a therapist at a psychiatric hospital, and I'm much better now, <laughs> but I he didn't make any money, really. So I became a salesman on the side. And one of the things that my trainer told me to read was a book by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. Has anybody ever read this book? Well, it talked about all the wealthy people, about what they did, what, what they were driven towards, how they made it, and it gave you ideas of how you could change to actually go out and become rich. And it did not say boo about anything spiritual. Nothing about God, nothing about Jesus. And me, being a curiosity type guy, did some research on these people that he cited in the book. And every single person in the book that he names died because they had a miserable life. They had several women that had left them. Their children had left them. They were all alone because all they did was try to make money. And that's what Jesus is talking about. That's the person well one to them. So, do you know a person in a level place? I do. Is it you? Are you a disciple of Christ? Yes or no? Universal sign for yes. Universal sign for no. So, if you're a disciple of Christ and you know someone who is in a level place, my question to you and to me is what will we do to redeem them? Amen. Now is the time for our offering. We use a non-contact method of offering. There is a plate on the back table. If you have an offering that you wish to give, you may get up now and put it in the plate. And when everyone is done, Wayne will bring it forward. And what will we do, Connie? Sing the doxology, number 95. Sing the doxology, <laughs> number 95.
Sovereign God, we give our tithes and gifts this day, knowing that you are deserving of the best we have to offer. The tithe in Scripture we are called to give is to be our first fruits, not what is left over. Yet in his writing, Paul reminds us that Christ was, in fact, the first fruits in your new covenant of salvation for each of us. May we live as an offering worthy of this great gift. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Please join Connie and March in our closing hymn, He Lives, found in your hymnal, number 310. <laughs> Always, and may we share that love with all whom we meet. Amen.